Hello all, I CS Kalyani Shirode, ICSI faculty, welcome you all for this session on lesson 8 of your setting up of business entities and closure syllabus. So today we are going to study about financial services organization and its registration process. So as usual starting with the introduction part. Now what we are going to learn in this specific chapter, we are going to learn about the different forms of financial services organization which are operating in India such as non-banking finance companies generally known as NBFCs and the various categories of such companies, housing finance companies, asset reconstruction companies, micro finance institution, nidhi companies and payment banks. So starting with what is NBFC? NBFC is a financial institution that is into lending or investment or collecting money under any scheme or arrangement. But see, there is one exclusion. It does not include any institution which carries on its principal business as agricultural activity, industrial activity, trading and purchase or sale of immovable properties. So, what you are going to keep in mind that NBFC is a financial institution. What is their business? Their business is lending or investment or collecting money under any scheme or arrangement. Okay. One more thing you need to keep in mind that a company that carries on business of accepting deposits as its principal business, that company will be also termed as NBFC. Okay. Going ahead. Now, NBFCs. Housing finance companies, HFCs, asset reconstruction companies, ARCs, microfinance institution, MFIs, NIDI companies, they have played a very dominant role in mobilization and dispersal of funds. Payment banks is a new concept. It is a new model of banks which is conceptualized by the Reserve Bank of India. So, what is the structure in India? Companies registered under Section 3 of our Companies Act 2013. So, NBFCs which are registered with RBI, so regulation, supervision, surveillance and enforcement under RBI. After that, we have few NBFCs which are regulated by other regulators, such as housing finance institutions are regulated by National Housing Bank, Merchant Banking Company, Venture Capital Fund Company, Stock Broking, Collective Investment Scheme, these are regulated by CB. Nidhi Companies, Mutual Benefit Companies are regulated by NCA. Check fund companies are regulated by state government and insurance companies are regulated by IRDA. And non-banking, non-financial companies, these are regulated, supervised under Ministry of Corporate Affairs and their enforcement agency is the state government. Okay. Going ahead, we have NBFC, non-banking financial company. Now, as discussed earlier, this is a company. Company registered under the Companies Act 2013 or any other earlier enactments. So, company which is registered under 2013 Act or any previous Companies Act engaged in the business of loans and advances, acquisition of shares, stocks, bonds, debentures, securities which are issued by government or local authority or other marketable securities of like nature, leasing, higher purchase, insurance, check business, but does not include institution whose principal business is of agricultural activity, industrial activity, purchase, sale of any goods other than securities. If it is securities, then it will be termed as NBFC other than securities or providing any service and sale, purchase, construction of immobile property, then that company will not be termed as NBFC. Okay, so financial activity should be the principal business. Now, when we are going to say that financial activity will be termed as principal business, when a company's financial assets constitute more than 50% of total assets. So, we have two requirements. First requirement is that the company's financial assets constitute more than 50% of total assets and income from financial assets constitute more than 50% of the gross income. They have included and. 
So both the conditions to be fulfilled. First is assets constitute more than 50% of total assets. Financial assets constitute more than 50% of total assets. And income from financial assets constitute more than 50% of the gross income. So whenever the company is going to fulfill both these criteria, then only they will be registered as NBFC by RBI. Now, this test is popularly known as 50-50 <coughs> test. I'm sorry. This test is popularly known as 50-50 test and is applied to determine whether or not a company is into financial business. So, please do keep this in mind. Now, there are certain differences such as NBFCs cannot accept demand deposits. NBFCs do not form part of the payment settlement system, cannot issue checks drawn on itself. Deposit insurance facility of deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation is not available to depositors of NBFCs unlike in case of bank. Okay, so no NBFC can commence or carry on its business of a non-banking financial institution without obtaining certificate of registration from the bank and without having a net owned fund of rupees 2 crores. So minimum 2 crores net owned fund is required and a certificate of registration is also required. So certain categories of NBFCs we have discussed earlier which are regulated by other regulators are exempted from registration with RBI. So they are not required to register with RBI which are these NBFCs, venture capital fund, merchant banking company, stock broking company. These are registered with SEBI. Insurance company holding a valid certificate of registration issued by IRDA. Nidhi company as notified under section 620A of Companies Act 1956 or formed under section 406 of Companies Act 2013. Chit companies as in clause B of section 2 of Chit Funds Act 1982. Housing finance companies regulated by National Housing Bank Stock Exchange or a mutual benefit company. So they are not required to register with RBI because their regulator is different. NBFCs whose asset size is of rupees 500 crores or more as per last audited balance sheet are considered as systematically important NBFCs. Okay. Now what are the types, categories of NBFCs? So NBFCs are categorized first in terms of type of liability. What is the classification? Deposit and non-deposit accepting NBFC. Non-deposit taking NBFCs by their size, systematically important and other non-deposit holding companies. They are NBFC, NDSI and NBFC, ND and by the kind of activity they conduct. So different types of NBFCs. First we are going to discuss asset finance company. Now, this is a financial institution again carrying on its principal business, financing of physical assets, supporting productive economic activity. Example, automobile, tractor, machines, generator set, earth moving, material handling equipment and their principal business again is defined as aggregate of financing the real physical assets, supporting economic activity and income arising therefrom is not less than 60% of its total assets and total income respectively. So they are known as asset finance company. Then we have investment company, again company which is a financial institution. Its principal business is acquisition of securities will be termed as investment company. Loan company, financial institution, its principal business is providing finance whether by making loans or advances or otherwise for any activity other than its own but does not include asset finance company. Then we have infrastructure finance company known as IFC. Again, it is a non-banking finance company. Deploys at least 75% of its total assets in infrastructure loans. Minimum net owned funds of rupees 300 crores and minimum credit rating of A or equivalent and having CRAR of 50% then it will be termed as infrastructure finance company. Then we have systematically important core investment company, CIC NDSI. So this is again NBFC, business of acquisition of shares and securities, 
Now, there, there are certain conditions for this specific NBFC that it holds not less than 90% of its total assets in form of investment in equity shares, preference shares, debt or loans in group companies. Investment in equity shares in group companies not less than 60% of total assets does not trade in its investment in shares, debt, loans in group companies except through block sale for the purpose of dilution or disinvestment, does not carry on any other financial activity except investment in bank deposit, money market instrument, government securities, loans to and investment in debt issuances of group companies or guarantees issued on behalf of group companies. Asset size is rupees 100 crores or more and it accepts public funds. So, these are the conditions for systematically important core investment company. Then we have infrastructure debt fund non-banking financial company. So, this is IDF NBFC. So, IDF NBFC again a company which is registered as NBFC to facilitate flow of long-term debt into infrastructure projects. They raise resources through issue of rupee or dollar denominated bonds of minimum 5 years maturity and only IFC can sponsor IDF NBFCs. So, this is infrastructure debt fund non-banking financial company. Then we have non-banking financial company microfinance institution. So, it is again a non-deposit taking NBFC other than company form registered under section 25 of 1956 companies act or section 8 of 2013 companies act. What are the conditions? Minimum net owned funds of rupees 5 crore. NBFC MFIs which are registered in northeastern region of the country, the minimum net owned fund requirement shall stand at rupees 2 crores. Not less than 85% of its net assets are in nature of qualifying assets. Now, they have defined what is qualifying assets. Net assets shall mean total assets other than cash and bank balance and money market instrument and qualifying asset they have given that the loan which is following the specific criteria. What is the criteria? Loan dispersed by NBFC MFI to borrower with rural household annual income not exceeding rupees 1,25,000 or urban and semi-urban household income not exceeding rupees 2 lakhs. Loan amount does not exceed Rs. 75,000 in first cycle and 1,25,000 in subsequent cycles. Total indebtedness of the borrower does not exceed Rs. 1,25,000. Tenure of the loan not less than 24 months for loan amount in excess of Rs. 30,000 with prepayment without penalty. Loan to be extended without collateral. Aggregate amount of loans given for income generation not less than 50% of total loans given by MFIs and loan is repayable on weekly, fortnightly or monthly installment at the choice of the borrower. So, what was this? This was about the qualifying assets which is loan satisfying following criteria. Then we have non-banking financial company factors, NBFC factors. Again, a non-deposit taking NBFC engaged in principal business of factory. Financial assets in factoring business should constitute at least 50% of its total assets and its income which is derived from factoring business. It should not be less than 50% of its gross income. So again, we have done this criteria, same criteria for this year also. Then we have mortgage guarantee companies. Now, these are the financial institutions for which at least 90%, see there is 90% of business turnover is mortgage guarantee business or at least 90% of the gross income is from mortgage guarantee business net on fund is rupees 100 crores. We saw 50%, we saw 60% now they are saying 90% for this specific criteria. NBFC non-operative financial holding company again a financial institution through which promoter or promoter groups will be permitted to set up a new bank. So, it is a wholly owned non-operative financial holding company which will hold the bank as well as all other financial services companies regulated by RBI or other financial sector regulators to the extent permissible under the applicable regulatory prescriptions. And then we have systematically important non-deposit taking non-banking financial company. 
So non-banking financial company which is not accepting or holding any public deposit having total assets of rupees 500 crores or more as shown in the last audited balance sheet. So these were the types of NBFCs. Then we have benefits of incorporating NBFC. So rate of interest is generally the main aspect in all types of loans. So NBFCs have brought down the interest rate to either equal to bank lending rate or even lower to bank lending rate. So when rate of interest is also lower, borrowers found it easy and affordable. So it resulted in lower EMI for borrowers and so competitive interest rate is one of the benefits. Then we have quick processing that applicant should fulfill the eligibility criteria. If he fulfills the eligibility criteria, then loan approval is very easy, smoother process is very quick. Immediate need of money whenever there is any immediate need, then they can apply for the loan and it will be approved very quickly. Less rules and regulations. So, NBFCs are incorporated under the Companies Act, though regulated by RBI. Rules regulations for lending not stringent as banks. Risk of default is high with NBFC. Therefore, interest rate and other charges will be accordingly priced by the NBFC. Even there is poor credit rating, then also loan is available for individuals. So what is the benefit? Loan available for individuals with poor credit rating. Individuals with poor credit rating generally don't get loans from the banks. Unless the credit score is about 600 or 650, then it is very difficult to get a loan sanction from the bank. But on the other hand, loans will be offered to individuals with low credit score. Who is going to give the loan? NBFC. Most of the time, interest rate will be higher than market rate, but yes, they will get the loan. Most of the corporate sector prefers banks, but retail sector chooses NBFCs over banks. Simple loans such as vehicle financing loans, gold loans, home loans, durable loans are offered by NBFCs and customer satisfaction ratio is very, very, very high. Okay, then how to incorporate NBFCs? So, again, the procedure for incorporation is same as any other company. Form run for approval of name. It should contain financing as the principal activity. Principal business to be written in memorandum of association while registering under the Companies Act. What should be the principal business? Lending credit, making investment in various types of shares and stocks, leasing, higher purchase, insurance business, check business and receiving deposit under any scheme or arrangement. What is the criteria for NBFC that they should have net owned funds of entity not less than 2 crore rupees? So, obviously, it should be ensured that the authorized capital of the NBFC is not less than 2 crore rupees. Okay, now what is the registration process with RBI? So, after incorporation, NBFC, they are going to get the certificate of registration. Minimum one director from NBFC background or senior bankers as full-time director in the company. Clean civil records. Understanding of NBFC finance and business. And non-banking financial company, they can commence or carry on business as a non-banking financial institution only and only after obtaining certificate of registration from RBI and having net owned funds of rupees 2 crore. So, certain categories of NBFCs regulated by other regulators are exempted from registering. We have done this earlier also. They have given it again. Which are these NBFCs? Venture Capital Fund, Merchant Banking Company, Stock Broking Companies. They are registered with CB Insurance Company, registered with IRDA. Nidhi Companies, Companies Act, Chit Companies, Chit Funds Act. Housing Finance Companies, National Housing Bank and Stock Exchange or Mutual Benefit Company. Now, what is the procedure for filing application with Reserve Bank of India? So, applicant company is required to apply online. First, they need to apply online and then they are required to submit physical copy of the application along with the documents to who? To the regional office of the Reserve Bank of India. Then after that, applicant company will not need to log on to Cosmos application. Hence, user IDs are not required. They can just click for company registration on the login page of the Cosmos application. 
window showing excel application form is available for download it will be displayed then company needs to download that application form from the website key in the data and upload the application form after that they need to indicate the correct name of the regional office in field c8 of the annex identification particulars in this excel application form they'll get a company application reference number and then whatever they have filed online they need to submit it physically hard copy of the application form indicating the online company application reference number along with documents to the concerned regional office company can check the status of the application from the website by keying in the acknowledgement number they get the acknowledgement number by entering the acknowledgement number they can check the status of their application certain documents are required to be filed with the application with rbi for registration it may vary depending on the category of registration so they have given type 1 nbfc nd what are the documents required certified copies of your incorporation certificate certificate of commencement of business in case of public limited companies certified copies of extract of the main object clause in the memorandum of association which is relating to financing business financial business then board resolution stating that the company is not carrying any nbfc activity or it has not stopped nbfc activity will not carry or commence same before getting a registration from rbi company has formulated fair practices code as per rbi guidelines etc etc copy of fixed deposit receipt banker certificate of no lien is required to be attached companies which are already in existence they need to give audited balance sheet and p and l account along with directors auditors report for entire period the company is in existence or for last 3 years whichever is less it should be submitted bankers report its group subsidiary associate holding company related parties directors of the applicant company having substantial interest in other companies so this should be provided with the application then we have housing finance companies as the name suggests they are primarily engaged in business of providing home loans and other related products hfcs they are regulated by the national housing bank now a housing finance company again a company which is registered under companies act 2013 or any other earlier enactment which primarily transacts or has as one of its principal objects transacting of business or providing finance for housing whether directly or indirectly national housing bank that is set up under the national housing bank act 1987 so housing finance companies are governed by this act and by circulars guidelines notification directions issued by national housing bank now there are few criteria that the housing finance company shall not commence or carry on its business without obtaining certificate of registration from national housing bank and having net owned fund of rupees 10 crore or more as national housing bank may by notification specify so we had two requirement in nbfcs also certificate from rbi and 2 crore net owned funds now in housing finance we have certificate from national housing bank and net owned fund of rupees 10 crore or more so now what are the benefits so various incentives were given by modi government in terms of allocation related to pradhan mantri awas yojana of rupees 23000 crore so it gave the momentum to the sector total allocation for infrastructure sector in budget stood at rupees 396135 crore in 2017 and 18 Holding period for capital gain tax in case of immovable properties has been reduced from three to two years. Now, what is the registration process? Same as any other company, run for name. What is the principal activity? Housing finance. Principal business should be stated in memorandum while registering. What it will be? It will be providing finance for housing and related matters. Net owned funds should be not less than ten crore rupees. So again, authorized capital of the company of HFC is not less than ten crore. Now, company which is registered under Companies Act, desirous of commencing business of housing finance, they should either 
primarily transactor has any of its principal object of transacting business of providing finance for housing directly and indirectly minimum net owned fund of rupees 10 crore is required then a certificate of registration may be granted hfc shall be in position to pay its present future depositors in full as and when their claims accrue Affairs of HFC not being or not likely to be conducted in manner detrimental to interest of its present future depositors. They must have adequate capital structure, earning prospects. Public interest shall be served by grant of certificate of registration to HFC to commence carry on business in India. General character of management or proposed management shall not be prejudicial to the public interest or interest of its depositors. So these are few conditions. After these conditions fulfilled then only certificate will be granted now these are categorized in terms of type of liability by nhb into deposit and non deposit accepting hfcs and are issued certificate of registration accordingly net owned fund so what does net owned fund means it is aggregate of paid up equity capital and free reserves which is disclosed in the balance sheet after deducting accumulated balance of loss, deferred revenue expenditure, other intangible assets, further reduced by amounts representing investment of such institution in shares of its subsidiaries, companies in same group, all other housing finance institutions which are companies, and book value of debentures, bonds, outstanding loan, advances made to and deposit with subsidiaries of such company and companies in the same group to the extent such amount exceeds 10% of all above. Okay. So what they have given, they have specifically given that net owned funds will be aggregate of paid up capital free reserves. We are going to deduct few things from it and the last point says that the amount exceeds 10% of what? of your accumulated balance of loss, deferred revenue expenditure and other intangible assets. Okay. Now, applicant company is required to submit a physical copy of application and duplicate along with documents to whom? To head office of National Housing Bank. They are also required to attach a demand draft of rupees 10,000 favoring National Housing Bank payable at New Delhi. So, this was about the HFC. Now, going ahead, we have Asset Reconstruction Company known as ARC. So, Asset Reconstruction Company, Securitization Company or Reconstruction Company. Again, it is a company which is registered under Section 3 of Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Enforcement of Security Interest, normally known as Surfacy Act 2002, regulated by RBI as NBFC. And RBI has exempted ARCs from compliances under few sections. ARC functions like an AMC within guidelines issued by RBI. Okay. Now, ARC has been set up to provide focused approach to non-performing loans resolution issued by how? Isolating non-performing loans from financial system, freeing the financial system to focus on the core activities and facilitating development of market for distressed assets. Now, ARC performs following functions, which are those acquisition of financial assets, change or takeover of management, sale or lease of business of the borrower, rescheduling of debt, enforcement of security interest, settlement of dues payable by the borrower. What are the benefits? So, they help in building industry expertise in loan resolution and restructuring management and also play an important role in developing capital market through secondary asset instruments. Okay, what is its registration process? Again, it is registered under the Companies Act 2013. It may be a private company or a public company. Company has to register itself with the Reserve Bank of India. Now, every ARC will apply for registration in form of application which is specified. They will get a certificate of registration from the bank as provided under Section 3 of the Surfacy Act 2002. ARCs seeking registration from RBI shall submit their application in the given format. Relevant annexures, supporting documents to be given to whom? To Chief General Manager in charge, Department of Non-Banking Regulation, Central Office, RBI, Center 1, World Trade Center, Kaf Parade, Kulaba, Mumbai. Okay. Now, 
they, are, they must have obtained a certificate of registration issued by the bank. Then only they can undertake both securitization, asset reconstruction activities. They can commence business within six months. They are given specific period. Six months from the date of the grant of certificate of registration by the bank. RBI may grant extension for further period but not exceeding 12 months. Now few provisions shall not apply to non-banking financial company which is an ARC registered with the bank. Asset reconstruction company shall have net owned funds of rupees 2 crores or more. Requirement of net owned funds has been fixed at rupees 100 crore on an ongoing basis on 28th April 2017. ARCs which were already registered with RBI as on date of this notification not having minimum revised net owned funds shall achieve this minimum net owned funds of rupees 100 crore by 31st March 2019 and same shall be duly certified by the statutory auditors. Quarterly statements in format SCRC1, SCRC2 on owned funds, assets acquired, securitized and reconstructed assets, assets realized during the year, value of financial assets unresolved at the end of the year, value of security receipts pending for redemption, these are to be submitted to RBI within 15 days from the close of the quarter to with which it pertains. Okay? Going ahead, we have microfinance institutions known as MFI. Again, this is an institution, organization that offers financial services to low-income population. NABAR has defined microfinance as provision of thrift, credit and other financial services and products of very small amount to poor in rural, semi-urban and urban areas provided to customers to meet their financial needs with only qualification that the transaction value is small and customers are poor. So what are the characteristics? So microfinance provides financial services whose income is small, unstable. Now these people are in need of credit facilities. So why they require such facility? Their needs are small, arise suddenly. Institutional providers of finance, namely banks, demand collateral security, which they cannot provide. Most of the time, they are in urgent need of these funds to meet their consumption demands. For example, to meet expenses related to education, illness, funerals, weddings, for which it is difficult to obtain institution finance and for purpose of investing in income generating activities. Now, concept of self-help groups is the discovery in the context of microfinance. Now, the Indian microfinance again is dominated by self-help groups. This has helped empowerment of women, eradication of poverty among people with low income. Microfinance provides greater menu of options whereby small loan can be garnered not just from the external sources but also through self-mobilization by way of saving and sell of assets. Biggest flexibility in case of microfinance is lack of any physical collateral even in case of loan from the bank. So if we summarize these characteristics, what are those? Size of the loan is small, repayment period is short, they can mobilize resources both from internal and external sources, no collateral for loan is required, purpose of end use of loan is flexible, loans given are mostly group loans trickling down to individuals. Transaction cost is low due to group lending. How to incorporate? Again, it is a company. As per Companies Act 2013, it can be a private company or a public company. They need to register themselves with RBI since microfinance institution is regulated by RBI. What documents are required? Certificate of incorporation, main object clause in MOI relating to financial business, board resolution which we discussed earlier also. Copy of fixed deposit receipt, banker's certificate. Companies which are already in existence, they need audited balance sheet, p and account along with director's report, auditor's report for entire period of the company or last three years, whichever is less, it is to be submitted. Copy of certificate of highest educational and professional qualification in respect of all the directors. Copy of experience certificate of any in the financial services sector including banking sector in respect of all the directors and bankers report is to be submitted. Okay. 
going ahead in addition to documents required for registration as type 2 in BFC ND. For NPFC MFI applicant, we need a specific board resolution that is going to state about the company will be member of all credit information companies, member of at least one self-regulatory organization, company will adhere to regulations regarding pricing of credit, fair practices in lending, company has fixed internal exposure limit to avoid undesirable concentration in specific geographical location and company is not licensed under section 25 of Companies Act 1956 or section 8 of Companies Act 2014 roadmap for achieving 85% qualifying assets. So this is all about it. Then next type we have is Nidhi companies. Now again, Nidhi Company is recognized under Section 406 of Companies Act 2013. What is their core business? Their core business is borrowing lending money between their members. They are also known as Permanent Fund, Benefit Fund, Mutual Benefit Fund and Mutual Benefit Company. They are regulated by Ministry of Corporate Affairs, Government of India, registered under Companies Act 2013 or any other earlier enactment. They are mutual benefit societies because their dealings are restricted only to members. Membership is limited to individuals only. Okay. These are governed by Nidhi Rules 2014, incorporated in nature of public limited company only. Hence, they have to comply with two set of norms. One is public limited company as per Companies Act and another is Nidhi Rules 2014. RBI approval is not required to register the company because RBI has specifically exempted this category of NBFC in India. Comply its core provisions such as registration with RBI is not required. What are the characteristics? They are allowed to transact business only within members with nobody else. Hence, in case person wishes to place deposit with Nidhi or borrow money from Nidhi, he must first become member shareholder of the Nidhi by subscribing to 10 equity shares or shares equivalent to Rs 100. After commencement of Companies Act 2013, no Nidhi shall issue preference shares. They are allowed to open branches subject to compliance with Rule 10 of Nidhi rules but do not operate on a pan-India basis. Incorporated as public company with minimum paid up equity share capital of Rs 5 lakh. Loans may be provided only to the members. It should be fully secured. Director of Nidhi shall be member, shall hold office for term up to 10 consecutive years on the board of Nidhi. Nidhi can declare dividend not exceeding 25% and any higher amount shall be approved by the regional director. Then certain restrictions or prohibitions on Nidhi's. They cannot carry on business of chit fund, higher purchase finance, leasing finance, insurance, acquisition of securities issued by any body corporate. They cannot issue preference shares, debentures or any other debt instrument by any name or in any form whatsoever. They cannot open any current account with its members. They cannot acquire another company by purchase of securities or control the composition of the board of directors of another company unless they have passed a special resolution in general meeting, obtained approval from regional director having jurisdiction over such needy. They cannot carry on any business other than business of borrowing or lending in its own name. They may provide locker facilities on rent to its members subject to rental income from such facilities not exceeding 20% of gross income of the needy at any point of time during the financial year. They cannot accept deposits from or lend to any person other than members. They cannot pledge any of the assets lost by its members as security. They cannot take deposits from or lend money to any body corporate. They cannot enter into partnership arrangement in its borrowing lending activity. They cannot issue or cause to be issued any advertisement in any form for soliciting deposit. And they cannot pay any brokerage or incentive for mobilizing deposit from members or for deployment of funds or for granting loans. So what are the benefits of incorporating? They mobilize small savings. Disbursement of loans is speedy, especially useful in case borrower is in urgent need of funds. Repayment is guaranteed. Higher rate of interest on deposits. Directors normally consist of senior persons who have experience in handling finance. 
well respected in social circles this lends credibility to the institution and instills confidence in the minds of borrowers and depositors how to incorporate again normal procedure for incorporating a public company obtaining availability of name filing memorandum of association articles of association other related documents care must be taken that object clause should restrict itself to object of cultivating habit of thrift saving among its members receiving deposits from and lending to its members only for their mutual benefit and for other permitted purposes name should end with the words nidhi limited mandatory requirement every nidhi shall within period of 1 year from the date of incorporation they need to ensure that not less than 200 members net owned funds 10 lakh rupees or more unencumbered term deposit of not less than 10% of outstanding deposits as specified in rule 14 and ratio of net owned funds to deposits of not more than 1 is to 20 so please keep this in mind these are the important points from exam point of view now the companies act amended the provisions and nidhi rules as amended with 15 august 2019 they require that nidhi companies have to apply to central government for updation of their status declaration as nidhi company in form ndh4 now what is the time frame given for it companies which are incorporated as nidhi before nidhi amendment rules 2019 that is 15 august 2019 they have to apply within period of 1 year from the date of incorporation or within 9 months of the nidhi amendment rule whichever is later companies which are incorporated as nidhi on or after nidhi amendment rules 2019 that is 15 august 2019 they have to apply within 60 days of expiry of 1 year from the date of incorporation or extended period as granted by concerned rd in case company does not comply with this requirement it shall not be allowed to file form sh7 it is for alteration of share capital and form pass 3 that is return of allotment such companies are required to ensure strict adherence of provision of companies act and nidhi rules as amended in case of contravention of any of the provision or rules fine which may extend to 5000 rupees further fine in case of continuous violation this is to company as well as every officer who is in default investors are advised to verify status of nidhi from notification issued by central government in official gazette before making any investment or deposit okay then we have the last part that is payment banks now this is new model of banks which is conceptualized by rbi now these banks accept restricted deposit which is currently limited to 1 lakh rupees per customer it may be increased further they can pay interest on these deposits just like saving bank account both current account saving account can be operated by such banks payment banks can issue services like atm card debit card net banking third party transfer mobile banking and they can also offer remittance services these banks cannot grant loans or issue credit cards what is the objective of payment bank is to widen the spread of payment financial services to small businesses low income households migrant labor workforce in secured technology driven environment so migrant labor workforce in secured technology driven environment by introducing this payment banks rbi seeks to increase the penetration level of financial services to remote areas of the country now to open a bank account in this bank application process is given it is very easy as compared to other banks these bank accounts can be opened through their respective mobile apps just by providing details like aadhar number with kyc verification most of the payment banks have a non nbfc heritage they will use payment bank as customer retention and acquisition mechanism now these are regulated by rbi they have given guidelines for licensing of payment banks on november 27 2014 operating guidelines for payment banks on 6 october 2016 application is to be filed with rbi in form 3 under section 22 of banking regulation act for getting license to commence banking business by a company incorporated in india desiring to commence banking business okay what are the key issues minimum capital requirement is rupees 100 crore for first 5 years stake of promoter should remain at least 40% 
Foreign shareholding will be allowed as per rules for FDI in private banks in India. Voting rights will be regulated by Banking Regulation Act. Voting right of any shareholder is capped at 10%, which can be raised to 26% by RBI. Any acquisition of more than 5% will again require approval of RBI. Majority of banks board of directors, they should be independent directors appointed according to RBI guidelines. Bank should be fully networked from beginning. Bank can accept utility bills. It cannot form subsidiaries to undertake non-banking activities. Initially, deposits will be capped at rupees 1 lakh per customer. It can be raised by RBI based on the performance of the bank. The bank cannot undertake lending activities. 25% of its branches must be in the unbanked rural area. So, mandatory requirement. Bank must use the term payments bank in its name to differentiate it from other types of bank. Banks will be licensed as payments bank under section 22 of Banking Regulation Act 1949 and it will be registered as public limited company under the Companies Act 2030. So, we discussed about various financial services organizations which are there in India. What is their registration process? Who is going to monitor them? So, a very easy chapter. Initially, you will think that it is very, very, very boring. But if you do it two to three times, it is really very easy chapter and you can definitely score marks if you get question from this specific chapter. You need to just remember the specific things, what are the specific things for each and every financial service organization. You can make a chart in comparative form so that it will be easy for you to understand and the visual effect will help you in your exam. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture too. Thank you so much for watching this video. I always recommend students to take their study material with them while watching any video so that it will be easy for you to get through the contents. So thank you so much for watching this video and all the best for your studies as well as your exams. Thank you.